Now we're going to talk about what happens to a light ray when it hits an interface between two media, for example, between air and water, or air and glass, etc. And the law that we'll be talking about is called Snell's Law. Because uh, if, if you start from a medium, we call it a medium, it's just a, that's a word for substance, such as air, a medium with an index of refraction of one, as air has, and go into water, which has an index of refraction of 1.33, the, the light ray slows down. And because it slows down, it also bends when it enters the medium. And so what you can see here is an incident ray, a reflected ray, where the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, like we talked about in last chapter. But now we're going to have a refracted ray. Refraction is the word we used to describe a ray that's, that's gone into the medium um, and bent. And so this is called the angle of refraction, theta 2. Theta 1 is the angle of incidence. So we see these two uh, definitions here, angle of incidence, angle of refraction. And the law that governs those two angles is called Snell's Law. So when light travels from medium one into medium two, or vice versa, the angle of incidence is related to the angle of refraction by N1 sine theta one equals N2 sine theta two, where N1 and N2 are the two indices of refraction that we talked about before, N1 for air, N2 for water. And we always put on the same side of the equation uh, for example, if, if one refers to air, N1, then we have the theta one that's the angle that refers to air. So air on this side in this particular example and water on this side. Um, so one thing to notice about this, and according to this diagram, you can see this. Rays entering an optically more dense medium We'll use the, the term optically more dense, optically dense medium. That means a higher index of refraction. So water would be optically more dense than air because it has a higher index of refraction. It roughly correlates with just regular old density, mass density, because water is more dense than air, but it's not a strict correlation. But that's the word that we use to, uh, to describe uh, a higher end material. Those rays, when they enter an, an optically more dense material, as this ray is, going from air into water, then the ray will bend toward the normal direction. In other words, this angle theta 2 will be smaller than angle a, theta 1. Here's the normal direction of the incident ray. The incident ray is coming in like that. Then here's the normal direction, also the same direction. But that uh, refracted ray has bent in the direction of the normal. And rays uh, entering optically less dense medium, lower end, bend away from the normal. So if we, if we put our flashlight or our laser pointer inside the water, then in this case, the incident ray is in the water. And the refracted ray is out here in air. And as you can see, this angle theta 1 is smaller than theta 2. The ray has bent away from the normal. And this will help you in a lot of this kind of rule, in th rule of thumb. It comes from math, and you can do the math and plug in the, the numbers, but having this rule of thumb will help you through many, uh, many different kinds of problems. So an example, determine the angle of refraction. A light ray strikes an air-water surface at an angle of 46 degrees with respect to the normal. So this is 46 degrees. Uh, find the angle of refraction when the direction of the ray is from air to water and from water to air. So first, from air into water. Well, uh, N1 sines theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. 
And what we're interested in is this angle theta 2, because we already have angle theta 1. And so if I want to solve for the angle theta 2, then I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by n2. The n2s then cancel, and we get sine of theta 2 equals n1 sine theta 1 over n2. So that's what we have here. Plugging in the numbers, n1 is for air. It's 1. Uh, 46 degrees is the angle of incidence. 1.33 is the uh, in, um, <laughs> refractive index of water. And we get that sine theta 2 is 0.54. Well, that's just sine theta 2, and we need theta 2. How do we find theta 2? We take the inverse sine of both sides of this equation. Inverse sine of sine of theta 2 gives theta 2. And the inverse sine of 0 0.54 gives 33 degrees. So that says that this angle here is 33 degrees. And that angle clearly is smaller than 46 degrees. Hence, the ray did indeed bend toward the normal direction, toward that perpendicular direction. All right, so what happens if um, we start off with the incident ray in the water, and theta 1 is 46 degrees, then everything reverses. N1 is now 1.33, and so this N1 becomes 1.33, N2 becomes 1, and we get that the sine of theta 2 is 0.96. Take the inverse sine to find the angle, and we get 74 degrees. So in this case, we started off with 46 degrees in the water, and then a much larger degree, a large angle, 74 degrees out in the air. So another confirmation of the idea that, that uh, a ray going into a, an optically less dense material, namely air, bends away from the normal direction. Uh, finding a sunken chest. Searchlight on a yacht is being used to illuminate a sunken chest. At what angle of incidence should the light be aimed? Good question. Here's the chest. We know its location. Two meters from this point at which the light enters the... Two meters horizontally from the point at which the light enters the water. And then 3.3 meters deep. And we want to illuminate it with this light. Well, we can find theta 2 from just the geometry. Theta 2, this, we've got a right triangle here, 1, 2, 3. Uh, theta 2, the tangent of theta 2 is the opposite over the adjacent. Therefore, the theta 2 is the inverse tangent of the side opposite, which is 2 meters, uh, divided by the side adjacent, which is 3.3 meters, and that gives us 31 degrees for theta 2. But what we're looking for is theta 1. Well, we know that n1 sine theta 1 is n2 sine theta 2. I want to solve this for theta 1. I'm going to divide both sides by n1. The n1, sorry, the n1 doesn't cancel here. It's still there. The n1's cancel on this side. Sine theta 1 is n2 over n1. That's this bit here times sine of theta 2. Plug in the numbers, we just found uh, what theta 2 is, 31 degrees. Plug that in here. Plug in N2, which is for water, over air, and that gives 0.69. Take the inverse sine of both sides, and we find that that angle must therefore be 44 degrees, which is indeed greater than theta 2. All right, you've all, uh, probably all, um, had a pole, and put it in water, and see that it bends in weird ways when, where it enters the water. Or you archery, uh, some people fish with, with bows, and, and when you, you, you shoot that arrow toward a fish in the water, you're going to miss the fish. And the reason is because of this uh, refraction that we're talking about here. So what happens is... Because of the refraction, things seem 
uh, objects in water seem shallower than they actually are. So if we have a, a sunken chest down here, the, the light rays coming from the chest and coming into my eye when I'm observing from this boat get refracted or bent at the interface. But my eye, all it knows is it sees these two rays coming in it and it thinks that the actual depth is, is much shallower than it actually is. And you can work out the math. It's a little bit painful to do this math, so I'm not expecting you to know it. But this um, is an approximate relationship for the apparent depth of an object uh, when, you're, when the observer is directly above the object. That, you get a particularly simple result in that particular case. So if um, D is the actual depth of the object. So that's here, where the chest actually is, from the surface down to the chest. And if D prime is the apparent depth, that's actually what we're trying to find, the, where it seems that the depth is, then the difference between them, the ratio between them is the ratio of these two indices of refraction, N2 over N1 where N1 is the in index of refraction of the object's medium, so that would be the chest, the object that we're looking at. So that's for this case, it's for the chest. And N2 is the index of refraction of the observer's medium. That's U, standing up here. So that's... Uh, so, in this particular case, if it were water, then the index of refraction in the object's medium, that would be N1, would be 1.33. And for you, the observer, N2, you're out in the air, the index of refraction of the air out there is just going to be 1. And, and so we could plug the numbers in and we get D, whatever D is, times N2, which is 1, over 1.33. Well, 1.33 is about 4 thirds. Um, so 1 over 4 thirds is 3 fourths. So 0.75 D. So what that says in this case is that, that apparent depth D is about 3 quarters of the actual depth. And that's a pretty good rule of thumb for objects in the water. So if you're a, if you're a hunter and you see a, a, a bow fish hunter and you got a fish here um, that you see at a particular depth, then you're going to want to aim deeper than where you see it to actually hit the fish. In fact, a lot of times, uh, I don't know if it's ever happened to you, but sometimes you reach into water to grab something and you just end up with a handful of water. And the reason is that the object is actually deeper and you have to uh, go deeper to actually find it. Uh, on the inside looking out is just the opposite. So suppose you're swimming down here and you want to look at, um, at an object. It actually appears um, closer. Well, the actual, it appears farther away in exactly the same relationship, uh, but, but you reverse the N1 over N2 versus N2 over N1. Uh, the displacement of light by a slab of material. This is important when we start talking about lenses. If you have an air glass interface right here, it's flat, and then another flat parallel interface where you've got a glass air interface. So you're going from air to glass to air. This is like a pane of glass. What happens to the light ray? Well, the incident ray comes in at a certain angle of incidence. Since it's going into an optically more dense material, it bends toward the normal. So here's the normal direction. Remember these angles are always measured not with respect to the surface, but with respect to the normal to the surface. So it bends toward the normal. But then when it comes to here, it's going into an optically less dense material and it bends away from the normal. But it bends away in the same amount that it bent it toward. And so this emergent ray and the incident ray are both parallel to each other. 
but there's a displacement, so it gets shifted. So the straight line path comes out this way, and the actual light ray gets shifted off to the side. But if the, uh, if the slab is thin, so you take these two and bring them really close together, then that displacement becomes small and not, so, not to worry about. That's important for uh, the thin lenses that we'll talk about. Uh, the frequency of light remains the same as it passes from one medium to another and the wavelength changes. And we have to think back on what light really is. It's an electromagnetic disturbance where there are electric and magnetic fields that are oscillating back and forth in a wave-like pattern with a particular frequency. So what this ray does as it, as it hits this interface is it causes the molecules on the surface of the water to vibrate back and forth, or the electrons um, in the molecules at a certain frequency. And then those electrons, again, re-radiate the, the light ray that goes down into the water. But the rate at which they're being caused to to, to oscillate by the incident ray is exactly the rate at which they're emitting uh, light that propagates down through the water. It's at the same, has to be at the same frequency. So the frequency is the same as it passes from one medium to another and the wavelength changes. And you can actually work out the difference. If uh, V equals F lambda for in the medium, in medium one, the speed V1 equals F lambda one. In medium two, we'll have V2 is F lambda two. If we divide those two equations, the top one over the bottom one, then we'll get V1 over V2 equals F lambda one over F lambda 2, but the Fs are the same. The frequencies are the same in both media. That's equal to lambda 1 or lambda 2. So that allows you, and you can actually, given the uh, definition of the index of refraction, you can relate this, these uh, speeds to the index of refraction in the two materials and therefore relate the wavelengths. But what you see in this um, diagram is the spacing between these two red lines is the wavelength in, the, in medium one. And then the spacing between these red lines is the wavelength uh, in medium two. We're showing a smaller wavelength. Why is that? Because the wave is slowed down and doesn't travel as far during each period of the oscillation of, of, the, of the motion.